to table plan or not to table plan? That is the question. This is something that makes me mad sometimes. It will be the biggest stress of your wedding, more than likely. Here are some of my tips as to how to do it right. Basically, what you need to do is you need to think about where you want to put your parents first. And the reason why I sort of hesitate while I say that is there's no right or wrong way to do it, but I will tell you what happened with my wedding and then you can decide from there how you think it would work with your wedding. My parents are separated and my husband's parents are separated. And for me, I looked at the traditional top table and I was like, oh, I want to have a traditional top table and this is going to be amazing. The way that you do the traditional top table is you have the couple seated in the middle. Next to the groom, you would have the bride's mother and then next to her, you would have the, is that right? You'd have the couple seated in the middle and next to the groom, you would have his mother and next to, no, I always get this run wrong way. Wait, couple seated in the middle. <laughs> Father. Father sits next to me. We'll do it the other way. Next to the, I'll get this right in a second. Couple seated in the middle. Next to the bride, you would have the bride's father. And on the other side of the bride's father, you would have the groom's mother. And then next to the groom, you would have the bride's mother. And then next to her, you would have the groom's father. And then on either side, you would have the maid of honor and the best man. Yes. <laughs> And that is traditionally how you would do a seating. Now, obviously when you then add step parents into that, that can get a little bit more complicated, especially since my stepmother has been my stepmother since I was nine years old. So she's very much part of our family. So we had my stepmother on our top table instead of my maid of honor. And I had my maid of honor sitting with her husband on another table. And that kind of for us made our top table. And it was great up until the point that we then got up to go and chit chat to lots of people. And I think my mum ended up feeling a little bit isolated because she was on the top table. And although our parents have both met each other, they're not particularly the closest, um, you know, they haven't spent loads of time together. They can do small talk, it's fine. But my mum could see that her brother and all of his family were sitting on a table in front of her. And I'd made a really silly mistake where I'd said to my mum, please stay seated. And she took it literally and literally sat at the top table for the entire time because she thought that's what she was supposed to do. Now, in hindsight, I probably would have had a cupid table. And a cupid table is a table for just the couple or for just the couple and the best man and the maid of honor. Then if you do get up and spend most of the meal walking around chatting to your guests, you're not leaving anybody really isolated on the top table. Don't get me wrong, no one had a bad time. I just think that in hindsight, that would have been a smoother way to do it. The other options that you could have is I could have had the top table as a big round table. If you are having a round top table, then just make sure that anyone that gets up to do the speeches actually goes and stands next to the couple so that the photographer and the videographer are able to capture everybody's expressions as well as then also capture the people in the room at the same time. Because there's nothing worse than having the couple with their backs facing the rest of the room and then someone stands up to go and do the speech to face the room and everything's in the wrong place and photographically that's really challenging. And you really do wanna have good pictures of the speeches because they can be really, really funny. Once you've got your top table sorted out, the next challenging thing is to get all the other tables done. And I think the best way to do that is with some Lego and just make a big table plan on the floor, name everybody with cute Lego pieces or get some something that you can, you know, paper tabs or whatever it is. Post-it notes are great and actually put the names around the tables so you have it visually and you can really see. I think it's great to do tables of eight to 10. Um, sometimes a table of six can work if needs be, but there's always going to be one table that doesn't fit that well. So just try to organize it so that you really do get, you know, the best people with the, the people you think they will get on with the most. But again, there's no right way or wrong. Just have a play with it and see what works for you.